Hello, it's Simone. I'm back with day four, I believe. It is one, two, three. Day four, April 2023 of my best of currently inked. And before I'm diving into April, I just want to recap March. I inked up this Bennu Euphoria Jazz with a fine nib with Sailor Shikiori Yuki Akari and I just love it is a light ink that is absolutely true but it's one of the light inks that I find to be legible enough for me to use it and I am so just so excited that I put this into that pen uh, in February and was able to have such a good experience. I noticed that I had such a hard time to reactivate the ink that I put down with um, with the fountain pen when I used my water brush to uh, fill in the letters. It was much harder than doing that over here, which is an interesting thing. I, I feel like um, the Cosmo Air Light paper is also uh, of course, not the same as Tomoe River paper, but it's much easier to reactivate ink on Tomoe River paper. And so I'm still not 100% is this because the ink is more um, water resistant than maybe the ink from February, or is this because it was just so stuck to the paper that it wasn't able that I wasn't able to reactivate it but I am super happy with this ink and pen combination I'm still I still really like this um, so that is awesome the um, I don't remember what I was going to oh yes I wanted to show you the gold sheen on the Momiji that's what I was coming here for the Yuki Akari is a very standard ink. There is some uh, dark blue halo around where it was. the ink was pooling. That is not visible, of course, in uh, the writing because I'm not applying as much ink as I did up here. But this um, gold sheen here and the green sheen on the infinite cube, they are hopefully visible to you as well. And now I'm going to turn the page so I'm not filming another set of way too long videos. Oh, I wanted to clear up some confusion on day two, February. Um, I'm going to leave that in the comment that asked. So I have used the Twisby Go with this ink the last time in February when I used this. But I have purchased um, several replaceable nib units for the Twisby Mini. And what I did at the time is I did not uh, purchase the full unit. I just purchased the this section right here and the feed. And then I used the nibs that I had on my Twisby Ecos when they cracked. And I do have a full video on what happened uh, on my channel. And then I put those Twisby Eco nibs onto those um, nib units. And so I have swappable units for my Twisby mini Minis. And so I put this medium unit on here so I would have a nib that is a mi mi medium nib onto this pen. I hope that makes more sense. And because I purchased these without nibs, I now have Twisby pens that don't have nibs because I used those and put them on here. And I am not able to remove those from this unit without destroying the section. So I'm just going to leave those on here. I hope this cleared it up and did not raise even more questions. If you have them, please leave them in the comments down below. I'll, I'll put what I just said in that one comment that asked the question, but I thought maybe it wasn't just the one person who, who was wondering what I was talking about. So I need, 
I need my um, this. Cosmo Air Light is very susceptible to hand oils, so if you're using that, please always use something underneath your hand. These are the three inks that I'm going to swatch from March, eh, April 2023. I am going to show you my currently inked page for that month when it was still really nice and uh, good looking. Oh, wow. There we go. I had more ink, more pens inked, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Uh, what I did in April is I, oh, April was the month where I was able to borrow pens from my friend Sarah of Ginger Peachy Pens. She loaned me the Estabrook ST in Honeycomb with a bean broad nib and the Pilot Custom 823 with in amber with a medium nib. I was also then gifted a Pilot Custom 823 amber, so they, I had three in my, two in my possession at the same time. Plus, I also have a Pilot Custom 74 with a medium nib, and I wanted to compare if there was, besides the size of the nib, and the pen if there was a difference in the writing experience. And then I did a similar experiment with the Twisby Eco with a broad nib and a Benu Euphoria. This Benu Euphoria that I just inked, where is it? Gone. Now this is a great video. Where is it? Right here. Um, I purchased a spare uh, nib unit which was a broad nib, and I wanted to compare the Twisby Eco Broad with the Benu Euphoria Broad nib. Uh, this is a number six nib unit, and the Twisby Eco nibs are a number five. Um, they're two different brands, and so I just wanted to experiment a little. Um, yeah, and then I try I used more, more of my pens and inks. So 12 pens is quite a lot. I think that was the the month when I decided that 10, 8 to 10 pens is probably more usable, suitable for me. The inks I just showed you are Diamine Brandy Snap. This was from the Inkvent 2021. And you can clearly see that I have used this quite a bit. Oh no, you cannot. There is maybe... Well, half is too too much, but it's just just below half of a 12 milliliter sample left. Then tea time. I used this in three pens. I decided to use an ink that I have a bottle of to do this experiment. And then I also I remember I really liked KWZ grapefruit, but I just recently used KWZ Honey and all of the KWZ inks are scented inks. They all smell like vanilla and there is a reason for that. That is, I, I don't recall it right now, but there's a reason for that. And my experience with the KWZ Honey was so intense. <laughs> the scent was so intense that I had to unink the pen. Um, and I just wanted to smell this one more time because I don't remember having that problem in April and I wonder what has changed. So let me just open this and smell it first. It does smell like vanilla still. So what's, did I not use this a lot? But then I gave it a three, so I should have, that is weird. So let me swatch the inks and instead of continue talking. Which one are we going to use first? I think I'm going to use Brandy Snap first. I'm using these plastic pipettes to get out inks. Um, I got these from Amazon and they came in a pack of maybe 20. I still haven't started using many of them and they're really convenient when you're swatching multiple inks at the same time. 
because then you don't have to clean it in between and you don't even run the chance of contaminating the inks with um, pipettes or things that aren't clean all the way. So I just um, fill them, use them, put them in this glass and I don't even rinse them at all. And then when I'm done filming, I usually go to the kitchen sink and rinse everything well. Okay, let's dip it one more time. And then I need a rag to get this off. Wow, I made a little mess right here. So maybe I can put diamine right here. Can you still see? Yes. Diamine. This is one of my favorite. I think this still counts as a yellow ochre. But I'm I'm open to hear what color you would categorize this in. But this is one of the my favorites of this color scheme. Uh, I know my friend uh, Shauna has been looking for a dupe for the camel colored um, Sarasa vintage. This one. I'm just going to try if it still works. And I feel like. Well, this is my, might be a little bit more orangey than the Brandy Snap, but I think it's, it's very close. Uh, yeah, so. <laughs> and then um, this is Tea Time. This is an Endless Pens exclusive. And this ink was actually featured in my best and worst stationary, stationary purchases of 2022. Uh, why? because I purchased an ink, a set of inks from Endless without ever trying a, a sample. And so I purchased six inks from this set. This was the Cozy Comforts. Um, and I did not have a good experience with a lot of those inks. Um, they were just, for instance, there is a yellow ochre included that is not as nice as Diamine Brandy Snap. And I, at that time, I just purchased those inks because I had this fear of missing out. And I didn't, I just couldn't pass those up. They were marketed really well and they are lovely inks. There's no doubt about it, but they, of course, they weren't available as samples. And so I bit the bullet and purchased full bottles of all of those inks. And I shouldn't have done that at that time. So this is a Robert Oster and I'm just going to write Robert Oster instead of um, Endless Pens E and all the jazz. They are, if I'm not mistaken, still available at Endless Pens. So if this is an ink that you like, you could go ahead and get that. I have shared quite a, f a lot of samples with friends. So I'm about, I have one third of the, the bottle or even a, a quarter of the bottle left. And that's a good amount for me to use up, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I don't, I really want to stick to my own rule, which is to only purchase ink, ink samples before I buy bottles. Um, did that work in 2023? Well, I got the mystery ink bottle set from Atlas. So I did not stick to my own rules again. I did, however, in that set or in that mystery thing, I had them pull those on. Wow, this is such a vibrant orange, orangey red. I, for some reason, I didn't expect that. Maybe it's because, um, when I wrote with it in the 
um, extra fine Lamy 2000. It was just such a fine line. I'm, I'm curious to see when this is dry, I need to turn the page and see what how it compares to Momiji. I think this is warm and Momiji is more cool. Where was I? Yeah, so I was able to write and say, I do not like shimmers. I don't prefer sheening inks. Please take, please choose very saturated inks. And yes, I don't think that these mystery sets, grapefruit, and those ink subscriptions, how exciting they might feel uh, are for me. I need, I need to know what I'm getting in order to not be disappointed. <laughs> but it was great trying it one time. And I got, I think, did I get three or four? I think I got a sample and then three bottles of inks. I'm not sure. And they were all really nice. I got um, Pelican Edelstein Appetite. I got Diamine, also Inkvent that I haven't, that I participated in. Raspberry Rose, the red Inkvent. And then what was the other one? Um, Lamy Crystal Ink Azurite. All right. So, ha. Since the time, since April, and uh, Sarah loaning me her Esterbrook SD in Honeycomb, I finally have purchased my own Esterbrook SD in Honeycomb. However, I actually purchased it with a medium nib, so I swapped it out to a just plain old non-branded non Yovo broad nib which is the same nib as you would get if you were getting an Esterbrook broad. I just, it doesn't have the Esterbrook brand in, branding. And I am really not that picky. I, even though this is gold hardware and the nib is silver, these things don't bother me at all. So let me fill that pen and see if I still enjoy Using it. I haven't actually ever used that nib, so wow. Maybe I need an ink miser. Let's see. I have, yeah, I have never used that nib, so I don't even know how it's going to write, if everything is all right. But before I can actually use this pen, I need to get an ink miser. What if I leave this here? Will the cat stay in its basket? We will figure it out when I get back. So, before I fill this pen, I wanted to show you one thing, what I, what, the thing that I talked about earlier. So I, I'm, I'm down to about one third of this um, sample and I'm not able to fill my pen without using an ink miser. I would probably purchase a bottle of this ink and I think the Diamine Inkvent Calendar inks come in 50 milliliter bottles, but I have a very similar ink from that Endless Pens exclusive that is how many samples? Also 50 milliliters. I was able to give away quite a few of those um, of this ink so that I'm able to use it up faster. Um, but if I had had the experience that I have now, I probably would not have purchased this because I like this one much more than the coffee date. And yes, it's 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 a, a small difference, but I think there is a little bit more orange in the brandy snap than in the coffee date. And that's and there's a little bit more green in this. And so now I do I buy a bottle of brandy snap when I have a very, very similar ink in my stash that I don't enjoy as much? Do I give away the, the bottle? I spent so much money on that. Um, so yeah, coffee date. I'm, this is the things that you learn as you go when you experiment and sample and try um, all of these things. So don't make my mistakes and buy bottles of inks if you haven't at least tried a sample and are and know whether you like that ink well enough to use it over and over and over again. 
So because this is a cylindrical, cylindrical form, I'm able to get this ink in here much easier than in the sample vial. So let's clean the section. Let's write with this pen and see how it writes. And then I'll let you go and hope you have a fabulous day. Okay, this is the, I don't even know what this is. Oh yes, Esther Brook. But this is such a broad nib. I think the SD that um, I got from Sarah was quite, uh, was had a little bit of a thinner line width. Esterbrook SD in honeycomb. With a broad nib. Oh my gosh, I love this. Alrighty, I will see you tomorrow with a writing sample of this pen and then we'll start on May. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you soon. Until then, bye.